Hi, this is Doug with 8 Wood Engineering, and today I want to introduce a brand new, never before seen lashing technique that I call a T-bone lashing. So uh, this has been in development in our research labs for about 10 years now. Uh, so yeah, we you, you can say we invented this lashing. Uh, however, inventing is not a great word. That's kind of like saying you invented a song, right? You didn't. You don't invent a song. You write a song. Uh, similarly, uh, with knots, it's not like you're coming totally out of the blue with something nobody's ever seen before, uh, right? With a song, right, you put together some notes. Everyone knows the notes. It's just the arrangement of the notes. It's the timing. It's the uh, how you know the order they're put together in. Knots are the same way. You have some very basic knots that you know pretty much everyone learns when they're little, and you get a little more advanced than that, where right? you get to like more complicated knots, maybe with bow line slip knots. Uh, then you get up to knot systems and more complicated knots that are kind of like chords on a uh, in a song. Um, then you get into systems, knot systems, and lashings and pulley systems and everything, which are kind of like uh, yeah, the, well songs. Yeah, so. When I say invented, it's not the perfect word, but that's what I'm gonna use. So I invented this T-bone lashing. Uh, yeah, again, it took me 10 years. Uh, this is the product of, the, the first prototype that's using this lashing system. It's a bed fence that I made for my son's bunk bed. Uh, you can see, very nice and solid. Uh, the It's hard to see here, but uh, there's a lot going on. This is like a symphony of knots right here, but uh, I'm trying to focus just on the lashing aspects of it, uh, the structural las lashing aspects. So of those, there are six points, six lashings. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, hard to see, so uh, check out this picture of the frame with my son here. Uh, you can just see the, the naked frame. You can see where those lashings are very clearly. Uh, if we zoom in on those lashings, you can see what it looks like just by one of those lashings, just by itself. Uh, you can get yeah, kind of get the sense of where the T-bone <laughs> name comes from. It's, yeah, there you go. Uh, then check out another angle of it. Uh, you can see pegs play an important part here also uh, in this system, right? That's why we get, uh, we, when we get into advanced knots, it's not just the, the cordage that's involved. It's uh, the material you're tying, any additional pegs and grooves, that kind of thing. So um, to start off this lashing, I'm gonna try to explain how to, to do it, uh, but it's very difficult. Uh, even if someone was here in person, I think it would be tricky to get the hang of it. Uh, the basic note in this lashing is called a, uh, uh, well, I'm using a boa constrictor knot and a constrictor knot. They're basically uh, the, this similar concept. Uh, the constrictor has two wraps and the boa constrictor has four wraps. Uh, but before we even get into any knot tying, uh, we have to set up the pegs that you just saw in this system. So to do that, we have to drill a hole straight through a piece of the one of uh, the trunk of uh, the of the T uh, in the T-bone lashing. So you think that <clears throat> might be trivial, but um, uh, even if you have a drill press, this is pretty hard. What I use is a dowel jig. So here's a picture of that zoomed in real tight. Um, Dowel jig is ideal for this. It'll obviously keep your hole straight. It'll uh, keep the drill from jumping around and binding. Um, I think these holes are three eighths inch, but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't matter too much. Three and the peg, of course, are three eighths inches. Um, so you can see um, the these cross sections right here in the next picture um, with the yeah uh, with the holes and the pegs. Uh, after I, after you put the peg through the hole, you have to file little grooves that are flush with the surface of the bamboo, and these are going to uh, catch the knot that we tie right that here. Uh, so this knot, this is a boa constrictor knot, and it and it the edges of this the two of the bites of this knot kind of well bite into the groove that uh, that little groove that I just filed. Um, 
<clears throat> so yeah, that's the, we've gotten the peg through the trunk of the T and the T-bone lashing. Now we have to start on the top crossbar. In this case, because we're using bamboo, we could use any material, any round material. It has to be round. Um, but in this case, since we're using bamboo, and bamboo can have a tendency to crack, uh, I am these two pieces here in this picture. I am uh, just putting a pipe clamp around them. The pipe clamp will take off later, but that's just to keep everything nice and tight for now. Um, so yeah. So now we're taking the trunk of the T, and again we tied a boa constrictor knot around it. Uh, in this case, the boa constrictor knot both makes the the uh, has a structural aspect to it. So <clears throat> when you we we, we drill the hole with a peg through the bamboo, which weakens the bamboo. This con boa constrictor knot in this picture reinforces this hole and peg, and it also as we'll see shortly, it gives us more leverage when we start to do the frapping knots. Uh, well, let's get to that in a second. So here, uh, oh, and another uh, another thing about the T, sorry, the, the trunk of the T is you have to uh, r file or rasp a cup so it nestles nicely onto the crossbar of the T. So this is kind of like a hip and like a ball and socket joint in your hip, right? It has to like fit real snugly. If you just kept the the top of the trunk of the T flat, it would kind of it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't uh, attach as flushly. If that flushly. Okay, so yeah, we're getting ready to <coughs> attach the trunk of the T to the top bar. Uh, yeah, we've pipe clamped the top bar to uh, to get rid of the the temporarily get rid of the crack in the top bar of the bamboo. We also have to drill a hole in the top of the top bar and put a peg through that. This peg doesn't this peg doesn't have to go all the way through. Um, but it, uh, it yeah and this is uh, we'll see shortly what the function of this peg is. So I'm now tying a boa constrictor knot uh, around the peg in the trunk of the T and uh, also inserting it in the peg in the top bar of the T to make this triangular boa constrictor lashing. So yeah, using a boa constrictor knot for the lashing and um, tightening this up too. So how do I, and I forgot to mention, how do I tighten up these knots? Uh, I'm not doing this by hand. I'm using a technique that uh, I call impact tightening. Um, this is just one uh, one aspect to tying th to this whole knot system. Please see a link in the description for a full video on how to do that. It's like a 10 minute video. It's too much to go into now. Uh, but the gist is I'm taking a big weight and, uh, well, just check out this little short clip here. Taking a big weight and just slamming this knot. So it just gets as tight, pretty much as tight as it possibly can. Uh, so yeah, back to this picture, we have a uh, we have the lashing done, the triangular lashing. So these pieces are now connected, but it's not super tight yet. There's still a lot of wobble at this point. Um, this is where we do the frapping knots. The frapping knots are constrictor knots. So recall we've used boa constrictor knots up until this point for the uh, support knot for the trunk of the, for the peg in the trunk of the T, and we've also used the boa constrictor knot for the triangular lashing to attach a trunk of the T to the top bar of the T. Now we're using a constrictor, two constrictor knots as frapping knots, and these are the ones that apply essentially leverage to that triangle and push it, push it down, tightening the whole knot even further. You can also see that the uh, the knuckle of the bamboo, because it's raised, there's a reason I have the knuckle there. The knuckle uh, makes it so that the the triangular lashing uh, part has to tra has a longer distance that it can be frapped down. All right, if this knuckle wasn't here, the knot would still be tight, but <clears throat> we would probably have to add one or two more frapping knots and. Um, yeah, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't be as elegant, wouldn't be as tight. So this knuckle of the bamboo plays a small part here. 
So er after everything is frapped down and tight, so this joint is not going anywhere. I mean, you could use this on a, as a weapon now. I mean, it's it's not, it doesn't budge. And you can see, you know, if I, well, it's hard to kind of have to feel, but this thing is very, very solid. In fact, if I, yeah, if I take it off and you just kind of feel it, I dare say you can feel the trapped energy in here. I mean, it has like, this whole thing has hundreds of pounds or thousands of pounds, however you want to measure it, of, <clears throat> of energy just trapped inside. And you can feel that. It's kind of like a, you can find, it can feel the whole thing vibrate in a way that you would not feel if this thing was put together with uh, screws or just pegs or uh, other kinds of joinery, uh, joint, jointery, joinery. <clears throat> so, yeah. <clears throat> So that's it. Uh, yeah, I know this is kind of a weird video. It's uh, hard to describe this system. I've been working on it again for 10 years. This is the culmination of all my efforts. <clears throat> so please uh, leave a comment if you have any suggestion of how I could better explain this system because this isn't just to show it off. I, I like I want it, I want it, want I want this video to be educational so that other people can use this lashing in in projects because I think it's it's revolutionary. It could change the world. So, uh, anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.